Hi guys, today's tutorial we're going to show you how to do a face swap with step by step instructions. We do this morphing technique with um, faces. Um, now it's pretty straightforward. All we have to do basically is when you're selecting faces, you've got to get them something like the same oval shape or the long shape, the same face shapes. That's the biggest um, tip that I can give you. Now, these two girls have got round faces. Um, she's a bit more um, Johnny Depp's girl. Uh, she's a bit more symmetrical with the masculine jaw. But it still, she still comes under the round face type of thing. So what we're going to do, we're just going to use a selection tool and we're just going to go around because we're not going to go for the jawline or anything like that. We're just going to go for the actual facial features itself, the eyes like that. We're just going to copy that and paste it into the other image. And we just paste it. Now, the other trick is to, when you're selecting two different photos, you are got to make sure that they actually match. See, this one's blurred and this one's a lot sharper. So basically what we have to do is just sharpen it. So we go to filter. Go down to sharpen and sharpen, and we're pretty much just about there. A little bit more, sharpen again, and it might be a little bit too much. But when we're doing the actual process of blending the two photos together, it'll probably work. The other thing you've got to make sure you get a, uh, a match as well is color if you can, and contrast. These are the things that uh, really make up the difference in doing a photo manipulation like this. <clears throat> now, their colours are pretty much the same. Now, this one, I'll make it a little bit redder, because see how that's a little bit redder? So what we'll do, we'll just go up to Image, Adjustments, and Colour, Colour Balance. Just raise the red up a little bit, not too much, and I think we're just about there. That'll do us. That's perfect. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to align the face so we put it in the right position so that matches the other face. We've got the chance of motion box around there. You can maneuver that any way you like with the, the corners. Now, we're going to take the opacity up the top right here and we're going to bring the opacity down. We're just going to bring it down so we can see the eyes, so we can match up the eyes. That's the key here. Not so much the mouth and the nose. But it's the eyes, because when we look at someone's face, we always look at the eyes. So we're just going to maneuver it into position. Take the opacity down a little bit more so we can see a bit more see through here. And I'm just matching up the left eye here, and the right eye is not matched. So I'll match up the right eye, and the left eye is not matched. So I'm just going to use the transformation so that it's perfectly aligned. So that's perfect, that's what we want, the selection tool. And what we're going to do, we're just going to go to opacity, take it up. Okay, so it's looking good. Now with this one, I'm just going to eliminate that little jaw part there because with the original background here, she's got a bit of an indentation there. I'm not going to worry about the hair part here because I'll fix it up later on, I'll show you what I mean. Now with the background image, click on it and you right click it, duplicate it, yep. Just hide that one at this stage, you don't need that. Click on the top one, so click on the actual image, not the, not the words layer. But before you do that, hold down the command key and select. And it actually selects the actual that image itself. Now we're going to go to select and modify and we're going to contract it. So we go down to contract. Just there. Now, depending on the size of the image that you're dealing with, a lot of times when you're dealing with something like what we used in these tutorials, it's a high resolution photo. So, I'm just going to go with um, five and see what happens to the lines. See how they minimize? So, basically, what it's going to do, it's going to take the difference. I'll just zoom in so you know what I'm talking about here. Um, because it contracted, it comes with selection went from the outside in. Now, if it went to 10, it would come down to even further inside. Which we don't want because we don't want to move 
or eliminate things like eyebrows and stuff like that. Um, that's perfect. What we've got there, five is fine for this size resolution image, which is, I think it's around about a thousand pixels in square in diameter. So, and it's 72 DPI, or if that means it isn't any off. Now, that's basically what we want. That's good. Now, what that's going to do, that's going to take a sample of the background, and this one is going to blend them both together. So, uh, since we've got that selected and keep it selected, don't unselect it, click on the image underneath and delete. Now, if I take the top layer off, that's what it's done. It's actually deleted what your mask is. Now, what we're going to do, I'll hold down the, command, the uh, option key and select those both images, those both layers. Going up to edit. Come all the way down to what they call auto blend layers and make sure you've got panorama selected, seamless, tones, content aware fill, transparency, curves. There it is, and hit OK. Now that's looking quite good. Now, while it's still selected, there's some little key little things to do here. Now that's pretty much matched quite well. I'm just going to go up to filter and blur. I'm just going to blur it a tad. See, that kind of, I'll just hit select tool. That's done a good job. And that's basically how we do that. Now what we want, we've got the hair. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn on the background layer, the one that we did it, uh, duplicated from. Drag it. Put it at the top. Oh, hang on, you got to unclick the padlock next to it. Drag it up all the way to the top and hit the mask button just there. Get your paintbrush. Get a nice, decent sized, soft paintbrush. Hardness right down, spacing doesn't matter about that. Turn off all these things, you got all these textures and shape dynamics. Nice, decent size. And make sure you've got black selected and you, you've clicked on the actual mask. And just start painting. As I'm painting, it changes, or well, basically it's eliminating the background. And it's doing a really good job. Now with the hair, I'm just going to bring the brush size down a bit. I'm just going to paint around the eye area. So that we've got everything coming through. I'm just going to go back because I've gone a bit too far there. I might take the paintbrush tool down a bit further. It is tedious, time consuming, but it gives us the results that we're looking for, which is great. Down here, we've got to put the eyebrow back in. And if you make a mistake, as with all masks, uh, like, for instance, if I did something like that, I go, oops, oops, oops. You just get the color palette, get the white selection, and paint it back over. And this is a little bit further here. And the paintbrush is still right down. Because she's got quite big eyebrows and it's really good to clarify. Now, if you need to see what's on the background, I just take the opacity down so I can see what you're dealing with here. Now, if we zoom in, take that off, eyebrows up there, but the hair, put the opacity back up, the hair is here and it goes right over the top. So, we're just going to take out bits and pieces of this. Capacity. We'll take the brush tool right down. I'm just doing slight little strokes here. Very slight little strokes. So you hear the, the tablet scratching on the board. Right. It's looking good. A little bit weird. 
not too much. Uh, I'll see if they'll too far there. Yeah, I'll repaint that, put that back in. All right, so that's basically how you look out. Now we've done it. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. If there's anything you need to ask, please put it in the comments below and see if I can help out. By all means, at the end of